Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the Automation 2040W. So the Automation 2040W is a powerful industrial automation controller. It has 2.4 wireless connectivity, meaning that you can connect to your local Wi-Fi and control your devices remotely. It has relays with a plethora of inputs and outputs, and it's compatible with 6 volt and 40 volt systems. It contains all the great features that you had on the previous generation. So I've got one here. This is the automation hat. This one has the 40 pin connectors on it that fits onto a Raspberry Pi. And there's also the smaller automation hat, hat mini. Uh, and this newer version is designed so you don't need any additional boards. It's a single board and you've got Pico W there as well. So it has all the same relays, analog channels, powered outputs, buffered inputs. And now it's on this single compact board and now with an extended voltage range so you can use it with more devices. So it's great for controlling fans, pumps, solenoids, chunky motors, electronic locks or static LEDs up to 40 volts. So all the channels on the buttons have an indicator LED so you can see at a glance what's happening and when you're testing your system it means you don't actually have the hardware connected you can see the LEDs are flashing away there and there's space for labeling as well you can see on the uh, little demo there and also on the, these white areas you can just get your sharpie and mark on what the actual thing is for that it's controlling and that means it's great for things like controlling your who <laughs> writes this piranha fish tanks smart greenhouse sprinklers elaborate homebrew projects or thunderbird s garage door openers it also has din rail mounts as well if you want them and they're available from the store too so let's take a look at some of the features. Like I said, it has the Raspberry Pi Pico W on board. So that means that it's got the Wi-Fi as standard. It has three times 12 bit ADC inputs at 40 volts and five digital inputs at 240 volts as well. It has three digital outputs, voltage plus supply voltage, whatever you're putting in there. And it has a four amp maximum continuous current two max continuous current at 500 Hertz pulse width modulation. It has three relays, which can be the normally open or normally closed NCNO terminals. It has two amps up to 24 volts and one amp up to 40 volts. And it has the 3.5 millimeter screw terminals for connecting inputs, outputs, or external power. It has two tactile buttons, uh, the LED connectors and the reset button. There's a little reset button there and A and B. And it also has two Quest connectors, which is a new feature from the, uh, the previous model they didn't have. So on the bottom there, you can see that there is two little Quest connectors and that means we can bring in additional sensors. So I've got a Quest connector here. This is a BME280, so a little uh, temperature, humidity, and uh, pressure sensor. And it means we can connect up just using a little Quest adapter and connecting that to the bottom of the board like so. So we can now connect up an additional sensor. Now if you want to connect even more than just the two there, you can get these from the store. These are from SparkFun, and these are like a little multiplier. So you can add an additional three Quest connectors to your projects. So it has M2.5 mounting holes, so you can mount this um, to your projects, the corners there. And it also has a DIN mountable mount points as well. So that's those additional ones there too. Comes fully assembled, there's no soldering required. And it has C++, uh, C libraries, as well as the MicroPython libraries too. So let's take a look at the power. So the board is compatible with 12 volt and 24 volt systems, as well as 36 volt systems. The supply requires between six and 40 volts, and it can provide five volts up to 0.5 amps uh, for lower voltage applications. So I've just got it hooked up to the bench power supply for a demo that I'm gonna show you in a second. And like I said, the Quest connectors, these are the uh, quick or stem QT breakouts that we can connect to bring additional sensors and inputs into our projects. And that means that if you have a Quest connector on board, you can plug it straight in with a JST SH to GST SH cable, which is what I've uh, just used to connect this up here. And it also has a breakout gardens breakout, so you don't even have to connect using the GST SH to GST SH cables. You can also just use the breakout garden header that's there too, just to plug things directly into there. So let's have a look at a demo, shall we? I'm really excited to show you this one. So this is a project that has been designed by G, who's a member of the Pimroni team. And this is an amazing build. So this is the project that G has built. So it's an Automation 2040W and he's created a clean room. So the idea is we have this little room and we need to make sure that the air inside is always clear of any kind of contaminants. So there's a great big fan on one side of the room and there's a door on the opposite side and the door has a sensor on it so we can tell if the door's open 
or closed. Uh, so that's one of the input sensors. We also have a uh, motion sensor detector. So there's a PIR just above the fan there. I've temporarily disconnected that because whenever I move, the alarm goes off and it's quite loud as you'll hear in a second. We've got the logic there that um, if the door opens, uh, it will set the alarm to go off. We can see the alarm there is that little traffic light thing above the, uh, the room. And that will go off if any of the conditions um, are true. So if the door's open, it'll set that off. If there's any motion inside, it'll set that off. And there is two buttons either side of the door, which is um, some arcade buttons, very similar to what you see in the Picade. So I can press those to reset or to allow somebody to enter the room. And if I plug in a, a console cable to the Pico W, we can also see on the terminal all the different outputs and states uh, using the program that G's written on here. So let's let's give this a go. I'm just going to go backwards here and uh, start opening the door. So let's try this. I'm going to open the door unexpectedly. So you can see there, the fan has come on, the little guy has fallen over, and it's flashing away. Let's close the door, hit the reset, and the fan will go for a couple of seconds and then it will shut off. So we can now hear it's nice and quiet. Now if I plug in the uh, motion sensor, let's see what happens there. So it's immediately detected motion in the room. Let's reset it again. So it's gonna blow for a second and then it's gonna stop. And it's detected me again moving around. So I've just disconnected that. And let's reset it again. Okay, so now I can press the blue button. We can see there on the little automation hat, we can see the little light is lighting up. And similarly, if I press the pink button, we can see that that's lighting up. When I press both of them, you can see them lighting up there. And that's just made the fan go because that's one of the commands I've just sent. If I open the door, you'll see the third sensor activate. You can see that there, it's activating. So I can close that again. I'm just going to power that down now. So let's take a close look at this build. Let's just for a minute just marvel at what G's actually created here. This is an amazing build. This is a laser cut pieces of wood. So they've been specifically designed for this project. You can see the Automation 2040 is connected by some DIN rail mounts to the back of the, uh, the case. Got that lovely text there as well that's been etched in. And we've got some little connectors just to keep the wood pieces all together. And then at the back we have the, uh, the little traffic light alarm thing looks very similar to what you see in a supermarket above the checkouts and we've got the little sensors there as well and there's a hinge uh, on the door and there's some nice little buttons you can see the the buttons there as well sensor is just mounted just like so so this is an amazingly beautiful little build uh, and i really wanted to sort of showcase that for this project so thanks rabid underscore inventor or g for creating this specifically for this video an absolutely amazing build so if you're interested in uh, more videos like this, uh, I have a channel over on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash kevinmacalier28, I recently did a video on how to make two Picos communicate to each other. These can be the original Picos or Pico Ws. If you've got something like a Plasma 2040 and you want to connect to a Pico W to give it some Wi-Fi connectivity, this is how you can do it. It's really, really simple to do. So if that sounds of interest to you, check out the channel. So thank you very much for watching this and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.